And yeah. Welcome to the Provoke Media Podcast. I'm Megan Keoghan, host of today's episode and head of content partnerships here at Provoke. Um, today, we are talking about coalition building, scaling impact. As global business landscape becomes increasingly complex and organizations look for ways to define and scale their purpose and impact, the importance of building these strong coalitions comprised of dedicated, like-minded companies and NGOs has never been greater. Thoughtful leaders are uniting to multiply and amplify efforts to make a real difference, drive change, raise profiles, and create solutions to solve the world's most pressing problems. With us today to talk up on this topic are Candace Dixon, Empower's Command Shift Coalition Development Director, and Amy Turpilek, Managing Partner of Fin Partners. We are so happy to have both of you here with us today. Thank you. Thanks Megan. for having us, Megan. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amy, to kick us off, can you tell us a little bit about your work at Fin Partners, what Fin Partners is doing in this space, and just kind of a little bit about what uh, Fin Partners is bringing to the table in the world of coalitions and coalition development? Yes. Uh, thank you, Megan, for focusing on such an important topic. And I just want to start by saying how proud I am to be here and honored with Candace our partner from Empower to discuss the Command Shift Coalition. So I oversee our corporate social responsibility and social impact team at Fin Partners. We are part of a larger purpose and social impact practice, which as you would expect, focuses on expertise in ESG, sustainability in the environment, employee engagement, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which we'll spend most of the time talking about today. And we work with a diverse range of nonprofits, corporations, government agencies, and startups to raise awareness for pressing social issues and build corporate reputations based on perceived societal impact. We've worked with Verizon for over a decade on their corporate social responsibility initiatives and communications. We're going to talk about coalitions today. We're currently working with Morgan Stanley on the Alliance for Children's Mental Health. And our very own CEO, Peter Finn, just launched a coalition focused on the health crisis in rural America. And before I, I toss it over to Candace, I want to say that diversity is a founding pil pillar of Finn Partners. This is such important work. And again, we're really proud to be part of it. Thank you so much. Now Oh, go ahead, Amy or uh, Candice. We're just like, really excited to be here. And this topic, we've done kind of a lot of preparation to to get us to this point of this podcast, but it's really fascinating. I think what is exciting about today's podcast is we're really um, we're kind of it's a it's a bit of a two birds one stone. We're talking a lot about the importance and business implications of coalitions, but we're also talking about the content of Empower's Coalition and the work that Candace is doing um, in partnership with Finn. And, and that work itself is really interesting. So today we're kind of going to cover both those areas uh, through this joint conversation. And, and to that end, Candace, please go ahead and introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about the work at Empower and, and how you came to be with Finn. Sure. Thank you so much, Megan. And um, it, it truly is a an honor to to be joined um, by Amy. Um, Fin Partners has been very instrumental in helping um, empower move um, a lot of our work forward, especially as it relates to um, our focus on advancing racial and gender equity within the tech workforce. Um, nonprofit Empower is a national nonprofit rooted in community. Um, we're committed to um, advancing more um, women and um, veterans and young adults in the tech workforce. And in fact, we create path pathways to economic prosperity by launching digital careers for veterans and young adults from underserved communities. Um, Empower was connected to Finn um, as we were looking for an agency that could help us amplify the important work that we wanted to do to address the underrepresentation of women of color in technology careers. Um, and when Amy said that Finn um, is co committed to diversity, um, that couldn't be more true um, in that um, when we um, at Empower saw their proposal, we knew that through the other coalitions that they'd launched, through their work with the Children's Fund, um, that they were 
the right agency for us as we were embarking on um, this journey of launching a coalition that we believe is going to be game changing in the technology industry. So it's such important work and even more important that it is addressing the systemic change and longevity, which I think is one of the defining factors of coalitions today and what makes them you know, successful, differentiates them perhaps of how we've even thought about coalitions in the past. Um, it's an entirely different strategy. It's an entirely bigger picture plan and one that empowers really um, such a great kind of case study for what that looks like. And I, um, like I've had the opportunity to learn a good deal about Empower in, in preparation for this call. I'm excited for our audience to get to learn about it as well. Um, and some of, and from a campaign and uh, communications perspective, there's a lot that we can all learn kind of about the process that Finn Partners has brought to the table of how they've gone about um, sort of introducing Empower to the world and in part of business leaders and in a way that is very focused on driving impact and, and long-term change. So um, Amy will tell us in a moment a little bit about FinPower strategy, but um, today's episode, we're going to focus on three key areas that sort of got uh, that the journey that Empower and uh, Amy's team sort of took in, in getting this to where it is today, which is um, an identify, test, and replicate uh, equation, if if you will, or secret sauce. So um, if we can just, if you want to introduce that a little bit, Amy, kind of the, the process or the mindset that you took in um, first approaching the strategy and developing that strategy when Candace first came to you, um, that would be a great kind of backgrounder for us. Sure. Uh, I, I do want to underscore, too, because part of our key strategy was leaning into the reputation of the amazing partners that were the founding partners of this coalition, including City Foundation. Uh, so the first thing we did was look at the companies that were already making this investment. And you said it, Megan, if there was ever a time for companies to get to come together, looking at the economy and what corporations might be facing from a financial perspective, one company can't solve it all. So the fact that Empower had brought together this powerhouse of companies who were invested in increasing the women of, num women of color, number of women of color in technology was where we started with the strong base. Um, to, to simplify, if you will, the, the process, the coalition was called Ad advancing the number of women of color in technology. We can't call it that. We all know it. We always think bold and big. And so we came up with a bold, big name with Empower for this coalition called Command Shift, which right away piques your attention and knows, quite frankly, we mean business with our mm -hmm. social impact. The second thing we did, which gets back to your question, and I know Candace is going to expand a little bit on this, is when we're building these coalitions, we must have quantifiable impact. Of course, the awareness is critically important. Without the awareness, you're nothing. But we stepped back and said, if we're increasing the number of women of color in technology, what is that number? How do we start with in-depth research that will give us a sense of the goals that we need to meet to create parity in the workplace, which was our goal. And, and I, the key takeaway there too is coalitions are big, but start small. And so mm -hmm. we found that the magic number was 250,000 women of color could change the dynamic of the workforce. And that's the goal that we've been striving to, to really achieve. And the, the third piece of this, and, and then I know Candace, um, you know, can give you a little bit more, is that we needed to remember, and we remember this across all of our coalitions, that they're shaped by the women that we, we're serving here. And so it was critical for us to look at and elevate the voices of the women that have been impacted by Empower, that could potentially be impacted by this program, to put us on the map to show the urgency of the issue because we really need to create the urgency. We know there's a lot of issues out there to solve for. So with this particular 
coalition? How do we create that that sense of urgency? Yeah, and if I could jump in very quickly, yeah. Megan, you know, I, I I love Amy that you highlight um, that the women that we're looking to serve really serve as the foundation of this work. The Command Shift Coalition is this corporation of corporate, nonprofit, and community leaders who are committed to advancing. Um, to advancing more women of color and technology, but um, we did not create the strategies for this work. We did not commission the research for this work without first talking to the young women that we want to impact, without first taking a look at the profile of individual that we think might most be influenced by the work that we would be doing um, on the coalition. And so, you know, as Amy um, spoke, um, you know, very eloquently about this process that we took in partnership with FEM Partners, um, we knew that we needed to start with the data, right? Um, when we first started, as Amy mentioned, we were the Women of Color and Tech Coalition. We have this bold name and now and with Command Shift. And we wanted to make sure that there was good data that could anchor that bold name and really drive people to action. And so um, FEM Partners connected us to Lightcast, formerly MC Burning Glass, so that they could help us conduct a landscape analysis to better determine the opportunities that were available to the young women that we are looking to serve within this coalition. And to be a little bit more specific about, about what that looks like, um, we believe that the work of Command Shift can help all women of color, but we were specifically focused on um, women of color from under-resourced communities who were pursuing tech through a non-traditional path. And in giving that information to MC Burning Glass, they took it, they did their analysis, and they unveiled something that we believe is game-changing. Um, they identified an untapped viable tech talent pipeline of women of color who have the skills to enter tech, but don't know it. And essentially, um, we have been able to use this idea called skill similarity to map the skills that they have in a service sector job into tech. And by doing so, we've identified a pipeline of 2.5 million women of color who we believe could easily transition into technology with just a little bit of last mile training and bridge training. And so for us, we believe that's game changing. It dispels the myth that there aren't talented women of color who can transition into tech. And all of those things we know would not have happened had we not taken a step back and really focused on getting a better hold on the data that was available to us. I love how that, um actually it, it kind of hammers home or a few points in the greater strategy there, which is one, just the value of analysis and the research and really understanding. Two, it serves the the overarching goal of hitting that 250,000 because it, it creates a pool there. But three, and this is and this is getting a little ahead of ourselves, but it really serves what you're doing with the testing and the and the research and creating the um the skill simil similarity tool, it lends itself to those business objectives as well because not only yes. in growing mm -hmm. this number of um women of color in tech, it also sets up businesses, tech companies, organizations with tools to start growing their internal structure and and creating a, a longer term ROI or, or a longer term solution um, that actually is sustainable. And so I think okay. it's it's interesting to me and something that I uh, am I, I think that makes this a really good case study is just how sort of multi-pronged strategy uh, things that we're achieving across the board. So each each phase of this really serves sort of the step ahead and the step forward. And I think there's a lot of that that we'll hear about in this story. Um, Amy, you're nodding. And I, I realize yeah. that I'm, I'm doing more talking than you. And that is actually- No, you but you, you read my mind already, <laughs> Megan. 
Uh, it, it's exactly what I was going to say. I'm going to get back to the business value of it all, along with the societal value to things. Um, these coalitions, while they every group is important, your policymakers, your nonprofit, but your corporations at the end of the day are the ones that are funding the coalitions. Okay. So for them, and you look at it from, again, I'll go to a corporate reputation lens. If you're a company investing in an initiative, you need to be showing ROI and you need to be linking it back to your business value. Um, you know, CSR is a must have and the must, the must you must do is connect the dots back to the business, right? So when we look at command shift, not only are we creating this pipeline of women, but we're creating a pipeline of women that can potentially work at these companies that are part of the coalition. So yeah. you're building a business value from a productivity standpoint. You're building a business value at a time. I don't have to go into what the labor market looks like and the workforce and finding in talent that you can retain. And so it's really a win-win. And outside of the Empower Coalition, this is how these coalitions should be set up. Um, this is how you have to look at it from the, the holistic lens of where the you can add the value. Because if, if companies are thriving, then they can continue to give back. And and what, what Command Shift and Candace and Empower have done to look at that number, that 250, and say, how do we also increase the you know, diversity pipeline across the partners is, is, is pretty, pretty important and pretty incredible. Absolutely. And, and I also, you know, one thing that we didn't really ever touch on in our prep for this call, but it, it, something you said just made me think of it. Um, it we've entered this era of um, PR and comms really needing to be able to quantify value or being yes. able to show a metric. And I think this is such a unique perspective to to be taking like this the value that a, a a comms partner can provide in scaling a coalition like this is actually very measurable um and i think uh not only that but it it also just really lends itself as an opportunity and I will say, I, this is not a this is not a plug that Fin Partners had has set me up to say, but it really <laughs> provides an opportunity to sort of walk the walk the talk, you know, in in terms of CSR and goals. We've heard a lot about that this year, um, and and being able to invest in the work in this capacity to to drive the systemic change. Um, in no way taking your work away from you, Candice, because at the yeah. end of the day, like this is this is the core of it, but it is such um a maybe a little known realm of the work that comms can provide to a greater impact area now and you know what megan i don't think that you're taking away the work that we're doing because i i would be the first to say that um command shift would not be getting the attention that it's getting were it not for the investment that Finn Partners has made into ensuring that people hear what we have to say. You know, we have been fortunate enough to get connected to great partners um, that Finn has made um, introductions to. Um, and, and by virtue of that, um, continue to build on our th thought leadership around the coalition and how um, the the information from our research and the strategies that we're seeking to employ as a result of that um, can be shared with broader audiences. So, you know, Finn has a huge role in that. You know, they're making sure that we are at the right tables. They're making sure that we are talking to the right people. Um, they're making sure that the right outlets are hearing about the coalition. And um, we've had a lot of momentum over the past year and a half and are excited about the, the path forward for us. Um, so a, a lot of this work, um, you know, we probably could have done it. It would have taken us much longer. And now we're in a, an amazing position where, you know, over the next year, um, we have some exciting projects that are coming up within the coalition um, that, you know, complement our research. So we're, we're looking to launch a, a new toolkit that really does drive home and provide um, the the resources and action steps that companies can take in order to activate the recommendations from the equation for equality 
And in addition to that, we don't want to forget about those numbers that we were able to um, gather in our initial analysis, right? We had the opportunity to take a community um, focus and lens um, within the equation for equality and really examine which communities um, within the country are doing well as it relates to supporting women of color in tech and those who aren't. And we want to make sure that we're continuing to update those numbers year over year. So we'll be releasing an index annually. All of those things would not have happened had we not partnered with um, FIM partners and had those conversations to really help us focus on um, the things that are needed in order to activate partners, to excite people about our work, and to really help us move our initiative forward. Absolutely. And you mentioned something really um noteworthy in there that we haven't even gotten to really unpack yet, which was the work in communities and starting small and kind of bringing us back to some of the first things you introduced us to, Amy. We talked a lot about going big, start small. And I know that the communities were an area that you really spent a lot of time sort of testing and learning from. And um, if you could take us through a little bit about kind of the process that went into unrolling in smaller communities, how you identified those communities, and then and kind of what the learnings ongoing are from those, that would be really interesting, I think. Well, it goes back to your uh, key theme, Megan, identify, test, and replicate. And you start, it's certainly difficult to replicate this model and as Candace said, this untapped pipeline and command shift has brilliantly mapped out. And I, I want to underscore something that Candace said. There's a toolkit coming out this year and a blueprint on how we can move the needle on the 250,000 numbers. So it, it's, it's incredible to work with NPower and understand that we have a number. And now here we are saying, okay, to meet this, we're providing you all with the tools. And that's what's really gonna be exciting for this year. And I, I just wanted to make sure that that, uh, you know, I, I reiterated that because yeah. it's important for companies that are listening to understand that um, this model is built for replication. And it goes back to your question about the local market. Um, we, we look to identify the markets where we thought we could have the greatest outcome or where there could be these pockets, if you will, the greatest pockets of, um, you know, this untapped workforce. And also looking across, you know, major markets and, and which ones would we target that could, you know, serve us first and foremost programmatically, um, but then also from a communication lens, um, because you do want a mix of major markets, smaller markets, you know, different geographies, et cetera. And so as we look to replicate this model and roll out now the, the toolkit and the resources, we're gonna depend on these 10 markets to understand what's working, because it's us, everybody says this, what's working is and what's not working, all equally important. Um, and then how do we take this and replicate it in other markets and then pop it up nationally? And so we have to look at that from a really surgical approach and we know the change the change starts locally. And I'm sure Candace has has something to add to this too. But yeah, and you know, for us, you know, from an empower perspective, that change um started um from our inception when we took a look at um what we wanted to do as an organization. Our goal is to build those pathways to prosperity so that um the young adults and veterans who are interested in pursuing digital careers have access to the resources in order to do that. And we have a community model that we use in order to do that within Empower. So there are eight regions that we are in where we run our Empower um, Tech Fundamentals programming. And it's there where we have been able to connect with communities and identify the individuals who we are helping to transition into the technology careers. And so it was from these communities, from those learnings that we've been able to build command shift this coalition and in turn um, target the communities 
where we are represented, but also um, take a look at communities where there's significant representation of women of color and there right. are strong and growing tech industries and make sure that we have these numbers to hold them accountable. Um, one of the things that the research mentions is, um, for example, Atlanta, when we take a look at the Atlanta region, um, you would see a representation of about over 10% women of color in the tech industry. But um, if you take a step back and look at the number of women of color who are actually in that region, it shows that um, there are plenty more that can enter the tech field and the equation for equality can help companies think differently about um, how they're sourcing that talent and really reveal to them how to update the benchmarks that are needed in order to, to activate the, the talent pipeline that we've discovered within our research. It's incredible. And, and I am sensitive to that we are coming up on time here, but, and, and truly uh, there's, there's just so much to learn about the Empower work and uh, the coalition there and, and how people can get involved. But I want to give each of you a chance to sort of sum up some of the biggest um, uh, indicators of success that you have seen so far through this partnership and where it has the potential to go. But um, just as sort of a, a, a wrap it up opportunity for our listeners today, what what some of those key moments are or those key milestones have been and and where, where you wanna go. I'll, I'll pass to you first, Amy. Sure. Um, and, and again, I go back to the, the lens of the coalitions and, and the work that we're doing with nonprofits and corporations. We need to be building in moments to talk about the impact and where we are in, in this um, journey. So we all know this. We've got this number. We want to reach the number. I see milestones and moments now moving forward where we communicate about how our progress, what progress we've made and where we're at with, with the initiative. And then to continue to bring more companies and nonprofits and partners into the fold, including communications partners um, and, and digital channels, et cetera, that can help us to to spread the word about this. So not only building those corporate partnerships, but also communications partnerships with, with communications channels and and digital media companies, et cetera. That's what I'd really like to see. Yeah, absolutely. Candace. Yeah. No, and so I I um, you know, underscore what Amy just said regarding partnerships. We would not be able to do the work that we're doing without the support of strong corporate partners, without the support of strong nonprofit partners, without the support of community leaders who are providing us with insights on their experience and really helping us to navigate um, this process in a way that has allowed us to connect to um, communities and resources that we weren't thinking about two years ago. Um, the other piece that I would add um, and that we mentioned earlier is just being very intentional about rooting the work that you're doing um, in um, the, the the voices of, or excuse me, rooting the work that you are planning to do with, with the voices of the individuals that you're looking to serve. Command Shift is all about serving the young women of color who we are looking to help enter, persist, and thrive in the tech industry. Um, and we, in fact, have a um, an alumni council that sits on the Command Shift Coalition that is a representation of Empower graduates who are women of color who are on their tech career journeys. You know, we don't want to do this work without them. They are instrumental in the decisions that we are making and have been with us every step of the way. So that's something that's really important. And then as I think about what we'd like to see moving forward or what's going to happen in the future, yeah. um, we have the command shift toolkit that will be coming out in the spring of 2023. In addition to that toolkit, we're looking forward to releasing the Equation for Equality Index, which is going to give us a refresh on the numbers from the Equation for Equality research that we launched in May of March of 2022, um, and also share some insights um, uh, that we're seeing 
in the industry across the tech talent landscape so that we can continue to provide um, valuable information that companies can use um, so that they can think differently about how they're sourcing their talent. And so we can be in a position to create that seismic shift within the tech industry that we're looking for so that we can achieve our goal, which is to double the number of women of color in technology by 2030. Amazing. And such a great note to end on creating seismic shifts at local levels, starting small and scaling. There's been a lot to learn in this episode, whether it is applying a uh, coalition approach to any uh, systemic change and societal issue. There is the crux of what command shift and empower initiatives are are contributing out there. And um, there's also the the learnings that we have from how comms can partner and strengthen this. So if you are interested uh, today, I know we have, we could have endless conversations on this on learning more about command shifts work. Um, Commandshift.com will, will give you that information. Um, and if you're looking more about Empower's initiatives and greater um, impact and work, that is Empower.org. That's N letter N power.org. Um, thank you so much to Candace Dixon today from Command Shift and Amy Turpilek from Finn Partners. Thank you to Finn Partners for sponsoring this episode. Um, it has just been a delight to, to learn and chat with both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, thank for, having you. Us again. for calling attention to this important issue. We appreciate it. Absolutely. This has been the Provoke Media Podcast, and I'm Megan Miller. Megan Keoghan.